Hello, and welcome to the weekly sneaky food review. This week, our featured food is the pale-faced beauty of the brassica family, cauliflower. What? What are you looking at? What's so funny? Do I, do I have food in my teeth? Just like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and kale, cauliflower is another member of the cruciferous family of foods. What sets it apart is its white color. Large leaves that grow around the base of the vegetable protect it from the sun and prevent it from turning green. So where does this amazing vegetable come from? The cauliflower that we know today originated in Cyprus. It was later brought to France from Italy where it quickly became immensely popular in the court of Louis XIV. About 200 years later, historical records show it turning up in England where it was a really important food crop. Around the 1840s, we started seeing cauliflower produced in the eastern parts of the United States and later in Canada. When it comes to preparing cauliflower, your options are pretty much endless. The way it falls apart into perfect little florets makes it ideal for eating raw or lightly blanched with your favorite dips. It's also excellent pureed or makes wonderful soups. You can steam it and serve it with cheese sauce. You can add it to casseroles. It makes a really great alternative to rice if you grind it fine and then stir fry it. And in a pinch, if you're following a gluten-free diet, it makes a pretty darn good uh, pizza crust. So, you know, when it comes to cauliflower, there are so many options for eating this amazing vegetable that you really need never bo get bored of it. So far, I've had nothing but great things to say about this vegetable. And I was wondering, is there anything not totally awesome about it. Well, in fact, if you happen to be a wrestler, a boxer, or a martial artist, you might want to take care to protect your ears. Otherwise, you may find yourself at greater risk of developing the very painful and unsightly condition known as cauliflower ear. Now, don't let cauliflower's pale good looks deceive you. When it comes to nutrition, the gloves come off. Like other members of the cabbage family, cauliflower contains properties that are very beneficial in preventing the development of cancer. First of all, cauliflower is an excellent source of antioxidants. It's extremely rich in vitamin C and manganese, as well as other phytonutrients that help prevent the initial damage to cells that leads to the development of cancer. One single cup serving of cauliflower provides 90% of your daily recommended intake of vitamin C. Cauliflower is also an excellent source of anti-inflammatories. And as we know, chronic inflammation plays a significant role in the development of both cardiovascular disease and cancer. Like other members of the cabbage family, cauliflower contains unique properties called glucosinolates. What these compounds do is they help prevent the spread and growth of tumors throughout the body by effectively cutting off their supply of oxygen and nutrients to the young growing tumors. This is just another reason why incorporating more of these foods is so beneficial in the fight against cancer. Recent media coverage has been pointing a finger at the Brassica family of foods, calling them goiterogenic substances. Now this isn't entirely accurate. Goiterogenic simply means that it causes growth of the thyroid gland. Now, in the vast majority of, of the population, we can enjoy these vegetables on a regular basis without worrying about any problems with our thyroid function. However, if you are consuming large quantities of these vegetables in their raw form on a regular basis, and you have a history of thyroid problems, or you're deficient in either iodine or selenium, by the way, both of these minerals are very important for the production of thyroid hormones. If this is the case, then you should probably consider speaking to your healthcare provider to determine just how much of these foods is safe and healthful for your diet. For the rest of us, go ahead and enjoy these on a regular basis. Five two-cup servings a week will allow you to benefit from all of the amazing uh, properties present in these vegetables. Our featured veg today has got me pretty psyched because we're going to be preparing my favorite dish made with cauliflower. It's a dry East Indian curry called alu gobi, which means potato and cauliflower. Um, normally this dish would be fairly labor intensive, but the way we're going to prepare it makes it quick and simple and absolutely delicious. So come on and join me in the kitchen. To prepare four servings of today's dish, you're gonna need one pound or 454 grams of cauliflower broken into bite-sized florets. That's equaling about five cups. 
You're also going to need um, two medium-sized red potatoes equaling about three cups chopped. Now, if you're following a lower carb uh, diet right now, you may choose to replace the potatoes with another veg. You can use broccoli or just some more cauliflower or maybe Brussels sprouts, that's your choice. We're also going to be needing three medium Roma tomatoes seeded and chopped. Now you can use any kind of tomato as long as it equals about two cups. I like plum Italian tomatoes or Romas because they're fleshier and have less seeds. So they're easier for this recipe. You're also going to need two and a half tablespoons of either olive oil or avocado oil, two teaspoons of curry powder. Now you can choose whatever kind of curry powder you like. I really enjoy Ace Curry Spices. This is a husband and wife team operating out of Vancouver, BC. They pay a lot of attention to the quality of the spices they select to put into their mixtures. And this results in a really high quality line of products that are awesome tasting and they're also gluten-free, preservative-free and MSG-free. You can learn more about them by checking out acecurry.com. In addition to that, you're going to need one tablespoon of turmeric, which is extremely high in antioxidants and anti-inflammatories, which is just going to boost up the overall cancer-fighting properties of this dish. Um, we'll need three large cloves of garlic, equaling about one tablespoon minced, and one quarter teaspoon of sea salt. Now that we've got all of our ingredients ready, let's get roasting some curried veg. Okay, we're going to start by adding our oil together with our spices and garlic to a large size bowl. And we want to stir these all so they're well combined before adding our vegetables. So give that all a nice stir. Now we can add our cauliflower, our potatoes, and our tomatoes. And we're going to stir this until it's all well coated with our curry oil mixture. That looks just about right. So now we're going to transfer our vegetables onto a, a shallow cooking sheet lined with parchment paper. So you want to make sure to scrape out all of the remaining oil and garlic mixture from your bowl. And then just spread these out evenly on your baking sheet. So now we want to bake our vegetables at 450 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 minutes. And we're going to place them on the center rack of our oven. At about the halfway mark, we want to just stir those around a little bit so that they roast nice and evenly. Now, wasn't that way quicker than spending about 45 minutes prepping this as a curry? Okay, so I think it's just about time to pull these roasted veggies out of the oven. Have a look. Oh, they look good. There we go. Beautiful roasted cauliflower and tomatoes. Okay, so let's just transfer our uh, cauliflower to a nice serving dish. Okay, now that we've got this plated, we're just going to garnish with some freshly chopped cilantro. And there you have a simple version of alu gobi, roasted cauliflower and tomatoes in curry spices. Thanks for joining us on the weekly sneaky food review. Today's recipe, roasted cauliflower with tomatoes, makes an excellent accompaniment to either grilled fish or chicken, or try it with curried turkey burgers and cucumber reda. If you live in the Comox Valley, you might want to consider hosting your own culinary nutrition workshop. You pick the topic and we'll bring the party. It's a fun way to learn about nutrition with good friends, great food in the comfort of your own home. I look forward to seeing you again next week for another episode of the Weekly Sneaky Food Review.